so here we have what they called a historic Canadian ice storm. Now, as you can see, it is indeed quite frozen. It was pretty bad. Uh, as you can see, I'm not getting out of my driveway today. So, we had quite the ice storm. But what today's video is mostly going to be about is how did so how did Starlink hold up to an historic Canadian ice storm as you can see the cord is indeed completely covered in ice now how you choose to have your cord is one thing uh, some people probably run it underground with a conduit uh, I chose to just lift it off the ground here. But during the ice storm, which has now lasted three days, we did not ever lose internet. Though I will say, during the peak of the storm yesterday, the internet was spotty. So there were times when the internet uh, had to buffer a little bit. It wasn't completely consistent, but it never went out and it was never off for more than a second or two. So clearly the dish itself has the ability to uh, melt enough that it stays clear during the entire storm, which is pretty impressive. Now it does the same thing during a snowstorm, uh, but I mean, that's to be expected. I wanted to see how it would do in the true ice storm. So it manages to keep itself clear the whole time. Um, we've had three or four blizzards now this winter uh, and it's never been an issue so the, it's always worked though I do find in a heavy blizzard with heavy winds uh, you will find that uh, it would be hard to gain uh, the internet wouldn't necessarily be consistent enough because there would constantly be little quick disconnections now if you're watching Netflix or TV or anything that does a buffer that's longer than a couple of seconds you wouldn't notice. So there was no like rebuffering during Netflix or anything like that. But as a gamer, yeah, you will notice it. But compared to other satellite dishes uh, that I've had, it's been amazing. Usually with um, other types of satellite dishes, if you get a blizzard, you can expect that your internet is going to be offline during the entire time that there's weather. Uh, even a heavy overcast will affect your internet and that's never the case here. Um, Heavy snow and rain doesn't bother it at all, uh, and a heavy ice storm. But I mean, this was an extreme ice storm, and even that never lost the internet completely. As you can see, these trees are just groaning under the weight of the ice. So it's doing a really good job uh, of holding up in bad weather. So it's pretty impressive. All right, so what I'm going to do today is I am doing a follow-up. I'm going to do a speed test during an ice storm here in Nova Scotia, Canada, because I want to show you that the satellite still works in bad weather. Now, this is our fourth weekend in a row of having a storm. We've had three blizzards, and this is an ice storm. They call this one an historic ice storm. I don't know what the difference is. It's probably because it's been going on three days now. I did the video outside showing uh, the condition of the dish, uh, that there, it's covered in ice, the cord is covered in ice, we have down trees, everything, and the internet still works. Now, as always, I did a little pre-test before I started here, uh, but I'm going to do another one right now just to show you uh, the numbers again. So, uh, I noticed a couple of things today. The download speed 
is very consistent. Uh, it, it's very high, as you can see. It's pretty consistent with my other videos. I think on a clearer day, uh, I was getting higher numbers, but this is the type of speed that you're not going to worry about it anyway. Uh, the upload speed is consistent with what I've always seen. Um, Starlink has always had a slow upload speed, which really won't affect you for that much, uh, though this is better than normal. What I will point out uh, that's very different is the ping is very high. Uh, the ping is 52. Uh, that, that is actually quite high for gaming. And I want to point that out. If you're doing Netflix, watching YouTube, you don't notice a ping. A ping is basically how long a delay it is between what you ask your internet to do and how long it takes to do it. So in games, first person shooters, that's very noticeable. During the peak of the ice storm last night, I was not able to play any games. Uh, the internet was too inconsistent. You won't notice it streaming because you're streaming buffers and you don't realize it's doing it. So if you lose a second here and there, uh, your stream will continue on and you'll never even know that it happened. But on games, you really notice that. So it really depends on what you want to do. But the internet never went down during the entire storm. So if you're doing regular things on your phone, uh, my girlfriend said she never even noticed a problem with the internet. I only notice because I game. And even then, it's only because I'm doing intense gaming. So obviously you can still play offline games or games that don't require a really fast internet connection. 52 ping for uh, satellite is still impressive, but usually I get way lower than that. So as you can see, the internet works just fine. Uh, so we're still in the ice storm, and I wanted to show you that uh, download speeds and upload speeds are still consistent. It's just the, the, the ping is higher. I don't know if it's because there's literally ice sitting on the dish itself, uh, there's a heavy overcast, or that there's still ice falling from the sky. Uh, but either way, uh, it's still manageable and it still works, so uh, pretty impressive overall um, for satellite. So uh, yeah, the, these are the numbers as you can see, uh, because one thing about satellite that's inconsistent is how well it works during bad weather. So three blizzards, one ice storm. Uh, not counting power losses, of course, the internet's the internet went down briefly during one of the blizzards, and when I say briefly, I mean for a matter of minutes. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's not much more we could ask for. Uh, it is very consistent. Anyway, these are the numbers, so I hope it helped if anybody's trying to make a decision.